Well, howdy everyone, and today I have a slightly sad, but definitely not unexpected announcement for you, which you might have heard already. Canon's EOS M line of cameras and lenses are being officially discontinued. Canon's Japanese website have now listed them as discontinued, and while they'll probably continue to be sold off in various places around the world, Canon won't be making any more, and this really was inevitable. You could even say that right from the very start, the EOS M system was working against a ticket clog, because even 11 years ago, it was only a matter of time until Canon produced a new full-frame mirrorless lens mount, and of course, the little APS-C mount on these things would be way too small for full-frame optics to ever work, and it also made sense that that new full-frame lens mount in the future would probably share full-frame and new APS-C lenses. But that doesn't mean I'm not sad to see the EOS M system go. In fact, some of the later cameras on the system were really good, and, as I'll explain later, I don't think the system has been a failure for Canon. The body I'm handling right now is a mint condition, original Canon EOS M camera, the one that started it all, complete with chunky original kit lens and even, yes, the attachable battery-powered flash it famously came with. A friend has asked me to sell it on eBay for him, so coincidentally, I have it here to show you on this video. This thing came out 11 years ago now, and I remember all the publicity and interest the new system generated, although the initial reviews of this camera were unfortunately lukewarm. It was criticised for not having many controls, making it fiddly to use, not having a viewfinder, nor an articulating screen, and the big add-on flash wasn't popular either, because, well, who wants to carry that thing around on your tiny, portable, new mirrorless camera? And talking about big, the camera's kit lens was much larger than Sony and Panasonic's little collapsible kit lenses of the time, which also defeated the point of getting a small mirrorless camera. And finally, Canon dragged their heels in bringing out new mirrorless lenses to go with this system, so you'd have to use a bulky adapter to fit any other lens onto it. And most of all, its autofocus was a bit slow and unsophisticated. So, when it came out, the little EOS M, to most people, just felt like it was too little, too late. Which is fair enough, because really, it was. Especially as Sony, Olympus, Panasonic, Nikon, and even Samsung were already competing with their own mirrorless camera systems. But having said all that, there are some nice things going for this original EOS M camera. Its 18 megapixel sensor was okay for the time and produced the same Canon colours that people really like. It was a genuinely small camera, it had a useful touch screen, it had some cute picture effects like the miniature toy effect, which was still kind of new at the time and some nice third-party wide-angle manual focus lenses, already being made for Sony E-mount, were quickly built into M-mount and put to market, like this tiny Samyang fisheye optic, and nothing so wide and yet so small was available on digital SLR cameras. Oh, and the APS-C sized image sensor, while not full frame, was at least a bit bigger than Micro Four Thirds or even the tiny Nikon One system sensors. Oh, and the lenses all came in this cool gunmetal grey colour, which I always thought looked pretty badass. It was only in later years that Canon finally started making a bit of progress with the system by releasing some new, better cameras, and most of all, some decent lenses. I recently made a complete guide to Canon's EOS M lenses, which I'll link in the description below, but here are my favourites. The little 22mm f2 combined a tiny size, a bright aperture, and surprisingly sharp image quality, making it probably the most useful and portable EOS M lens. The 11-22mm lens enjoyed excellent sharpness and a handy ultra-wide zoom range, and the 32mm f1.4 is one of the sharpest APS-C camera lenses ever made. It was pretty much the only official EFM lens that could resolve the 325 megapixel sensors of their last cameras, like the M6 Mark II. None of the other lenses were really sharp enough. I would love to see Canon simply rebody all those lovely old EOS M lenses into RF mount bodies for people to use on their new RFS mount APS-C cameras. In fact, I don't know why Canon aren't just doing that now. 
Canon also eventually launched a new kit lens, which was smaller and zoomed out a bit wider to 15mm. This really is the lens the system should have come out with in the first place. It's lovely and handy, and its image quality was certainly okay. Oh, and another advantage is that Canon actually allowed third-party autofocus lenses onto the system, which is what they need to be doing right now with their EOS R cameras before they completely alienate every photographer on the planet. Sigma launched their trio of affordable autofocus prime lenses onto the EOS M system, which was great to see as people could then easily and affordably get a bit more creative with their cameras. I owned an EOS M3 camera and eventually an M6 Mark II, and despite some of their limitations, I always really enjoyed using them because they offered the Canon experience in a nice small body, and I genuinely liked the newer lenses and the very last camera bodies that Canon eventually brought out. Thankfully, I saw the writing on the wall for the system as far back as last year, and I sold my old EOS M6 Mark II camera while it still had some value, but it's hard to call the system a total failure, in my opinion, because actually a lot of the cameras sold very well for Canon, especially the affordable M50 models, and in some ways they introduced a bit of a new generation to Canon shooting, helping to dispel the surface level myths out there that digital SLR cameras are somehow better quality than mirrorless. The whole thing reminds me of the evolutionary journey of my favourite portable music system. If you'll permit me to go down a rabbit hole just for a moment, the Sony Minidisc. It too survived on the market for a little over 10 years. It too suffered from a weak initial product launch with a flawed first machine. It too only had a small number of supporting lenses, uh, I mean supporting pre-recorded discs, but it too went on to improve to the point where the equipment became excellent and really enjoyable to use, but in the same way that the mini discs days were numbered by the arrival of MP3 players, the EOS M was numbered by the arrival of, well, new full frame camera systems. Sorry for the contrived rabbit hole there, the truth is I just love talking about mini discs as well as camera lenses. So commiserations to anyone now stuck with an EOS M system camera, get some good use and happy times out of it though before you sell it on eBay, but at least you can know that better things are to come as the new RFS mirrorless cameras, especially the EOS R10 and R50 are excellent and they really are the future. I can't see a new camera mount for Canon coming out any time in the next 30 years or so unless someone completely reinvents the camera. Hopefully, Canon will get some new RFS lenses out there and finally let some third party manufacturers onto the system too. Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you next time.